You're never going to believe how easy this is. If you've ever wanted to digitize your own custom designs for a jacket but didn't know how, then keep watching. Because today I'll be doing not one, not two, but three digitized designs for a puffer jacket as a special two-part embroidery hub episode. I'll take you through the entire digitizing process from beginning to end, including how to convert artwork into an applique design, how to adjust your underlay stitches for the best results, how to manually digitize letters and shapes, and how to scale down a design for our front chest logo. I'll also showcase some of the innovative features available in our Chroma Lux digitizing software. And be sure to stay to the end to get an exclusive sneak peek at our next episode where we embroider our designs onto a puffer jacket. But before we get started, if you like this video or enjoy content like this, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. For this episode, I'll be using our innovative Chroma Lux digitizing software. Chroma Lux is the most advanced tier of our premier Chroma digitizing software. With Chroma Lux, you'll be able to edit your special effects and save them for future use, filter out and eliminate stitches that are redundant or too short, and even choose elements in your design and magically convert them to a stitch type of your choosing. It is the perfect software for anyone with a large scale embroidery business or small business owners who receive a lot of specialized embroidery requests. We actually have a blog on our website where we go into greater detail of the differences of Chroma's three tiers. I'll leave a link to that in the card above in the description below. Now, let's start digitizing. So first off, I'll upload my vector file. A vector file is a small, scalable, and editable image. You can also use files like PNG or JPEG. Just make sure that you're using a high resolution image so you can get the best results. However, using a vector file will always have a high resolution and makes it much easier to scale and select individual portions of your design as you digitize. So you always wanna ask your customer for a vector file whenever possible. Now I'll start with the applique portion of our design. This portion here at the top. The first thing I'm gonna do is delete the back portion of my vector file. And then I'm going to group my letters and convert them into a run stitch. This will serve as the placement stitch for my applique design. Now I will go to the right side of the screen, click on my command tab and select trim. This will automatically tell my machine to trim the design while it embroiders so I don't end up with a bunch of jump stitches connecting my letters. Now I will come up to the top of my screen and click on slow redraw. This will simulate how my machine will embroider my design to ensure everything looks good. Now I will drag my mouse, select my run stitch, and duplicate it twice. I'll leave my second run stitch as is. This will serve as my tack down stitch. When you're digitizing an applique design, proper sequencing is crucial. If your stitches are out of order, your machine will not embroider the design the way it should. Now I will come down to my sequence, right click on my third run stitch, and then select convert to and applique. All right, that looks good. Now I'm just gonna come up here to my applique tab and adjust my stitch density. When you're digitizing, you wanna keep stitch density between 0 0.20 and 0 0.40. Anything more or less than that will most likely cause a problem when you try to embroider your design. For this, I'll go with 0 0.30. Remember, the lower the number, the greater the stitch density. Now, when I click on the eye icon next to my layers, I can see where my placement and tack down stitches are. All right, as you can see, the interior of my A overlaps just a bit. So let's quickly go in and fix that. First, I will right click on my A and select ungroup to ungroup my A from all my other letters. Now I will right click on the inside of my A and select break apart to separate the inner and outer portions of my A. Then I'm gonna select the shaping tool. The shaping tool allows me to adjust the shape of my design by repositioning, adding, and deleting node points from my design. I can also adjust my design's start and end points, represented by these green and red dots. In this case, I will add two points right here at the base, and then I'll delete my topmost point from the interior of my A. Then I will right click on my design and Chroma will instantly remove my overlay. Now to fill in the gap, I'll come over here and select my satin tool. This will give my lettering greater detail. Now I will manually digitize the missing portion of my design by building a ladder with my points to create the interior of A. Beautiful. Now I'm going to real quick adjust my density. And then I'll do a quick run through with my slow redraw feature to see how this will embroider. And that looks good. 
Now I will click and drag over my design and change the color to yellow, making it easier to see against my red applique design. And now that our applique design is done, it's time to start digitizing my logo for the back portion of my design. So now I'm going to import my file. Then I will delete my letters from up top since that will be the applique portion of my design. Now I will select my blue border and convert it to a complex fill. We use this type of stitch to embroider larger areas like the background of this design. Then I will click on 3D view to see how this will look once embroidered. All right, that looks good. Now I'm going to adjust my density. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is select my shape tool. When I do this, you can see my angle lines appear as this yellow line running across my design. The angle line tells me the direction my stitches will run once embroidered. I will move this line so that it runs horizontally across my design. This will cause my machine to embroider my stitches from left to right. Now that my blue background is done, I'll move on to my yellow background. So I'll right click on the yellow background and select Convert To and Complex Fill. Then I'll adjust my density. So I'll select my shaping tool to adjust my angle line until my design looks how I want it to. Now I will click on 3D mode Now, let's go back to realistic mode. Since we're embroidering the yellow background on top of the blue, we need to remove the underlay from our yellow background. Underlay is an embroidery design skeleton. Stitches are laid before the upper decorative stitches. This provides stability for the overall design. So, I will come up to my underlay tab, uncheck perpendicular, and hit apply. This will automatically remove my underlay stitch from my yellow background. Now, to give my design nice, clean edges, I will create a border around my yellow background. So I'll select my yellow background and copy and paste it to duplicate. Now I'm going to click and convert my duplicated design to a steel stitch. Then I'm going to the right side of the screen under my steel tab and adjust my width and density. Now I'll return to 3D view and check my design for flaws. Then I will change my steel to white so that it stands out and is easier to see. After that, I will go to my underlay tab. To get rid of any underlays, you will need to uncheck any selected options. In this case, I need to check off the parallel option and hit apply. Now I'll change this back to realistic view. As you can see, we have some overlapping stitches in our border. To fix that, we will use the same process we used during the applique portion of our design. So I'm going to select the shaping tool, then I'm going to delete some points, and then I'm gonna right click on my design and get rid of my overlay. Now I'll come over here and select my complex fill tool and build a ladder with my points to create a connection for my border. Then I will right click and convert this portion of my border to a satin stitch. Then I'll select my shape tool to adjust my angle lines as well as my start and end points. Then I'll change the color to white. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing for the rest of my border. Now that that's done, I'll select all my fixed edges and the border and group them together. Now just to make this easier to keep track of, I will change the color of my border and organize my layers based on color in my sequence tab. There we go. Now I'll digitize my red outline. So I'll select my red outline vector and convert it to steel stitch. Then I'll adjust my width and density. Now, I'll drag this layer and put it on top of my blue background. After that, I'll go back to 3D view to see my border in detail and check for any flaws. Now, as you can see, we have a few gaps here where the border separates from my blue background. So let's go ahead and fill those out. To do that, I'll go to the Steel tab and adjust my inset. Increasing the inset percentage of my steel stitch will bring my border in and make it align with my blue background. Now I'll hit apply, and just like that, no more gaps. With that fixed, I'll go to my underlay tab, uncheck parallel, and hit apply. Now I'll return to realistic view, 
and quickly adjust the density of my border. And now we're ready to digitize our letters. I'll start by selecting my satin tool from the toolbar. This will give my lettering greater detail. Then I will hold down my command button and build a ladder and manually digitize my S. This will help ensure the embroidery follows the curves of your letters. Then I'll select my shape tool to fill in the gaps between my artwork and my stitches. And then I'll quickly adjust my density. Now that my S is done, I'll manually digitize the first part of my O, but I'll stop right at the top of the arc so that there's no overlap. All right, now I'll just go back with my shaping tool and fill out my design and right click to apply. Now I'll just adjust my density. Then I'll return to my satin tool and finish digitizing my O. To make this go by a little faster, I'll duplicate my O and bring it over here to use after my L. Now using my shaping tool, I'll adjust my angle lines to fill in any gaps within my letter. And finally, all I need to do is select order and click forward to bring it a bit forward so that it doesn't overlap with the L. Then I'm just gonna repeat this process for my other letters. I used a process similar to this when I recently digitized the design for a custom beanie. If you'd like to see how that project turned out, I'll leave a link to the video in the card above and the description below. Now I'll select all my layers, go to the command tab on the right side, click end command and select trim so I don't have a bunch of jump stitches. Now for the stars. To make this a little easier to see, I'm just going to really quick remove all the artwork that has already been digitized. Now to digitize my stars, I'm going to start by right clicking on one of my stars. Then I will come down to where it says convert to and then satin. I'm using a satin stitch on these stars to give them more detail and to help them pop a little better. Now I'll use my shaping tools to remove any angle lines. Then I'll do the same thing for my split lines. Once that's done, I will right click on the purple outline and add three angle lines, going from left to right. That will remove all the split lines from the star and make it appear as a single seamless design. Once the first star is digitized, all I need to do is copy, paste, and resize the same star for all of my remaining stars. Now that my stars are done, it's time to make a wish and digitize my comment. My comet is comprised of two parts, the tail and the comet itself. So I'm going to click on both my tail and my comet and then right click and convert to complex fill. Then I will change the color of my tail to this nice light blue. Now I'll just quickly adjust my density and remove the underlay. All right, now I will use my shape tool and adjust my stars and endpoints on my tail and my comet. Once the tail of my comet has been digitized, I will switch to my satin tool and command click on the outline of the comet itself. This will give my comet greater definition and make it stand out from the rest of my design once it's embroidered. Now the last thing I need to do for this design is digitize the letters at the bottom. So I'm going to click on my text tool. Now I'm going to delete my A and click return. I'm doing this because I will convert this into a circle text. Adding this space will ensure that my text appears in the bottom curve of my circle. Now I'll change my font to Arial. Then I will come up here and change my alignment to circle. Once that's done, all that's left is to stretch and resize my text until it properly fits my design. And then I'll quickly adjust my density. Finally, we will simulate our design to ensure everything looks good. Then I'll select all my layers, go to my command tab, and select trim. 
With that done, all that's left for me to do is to digitize my left chest logo design. The first thing we will do is take the design we just digitized from the back of our jacket and shrink it for the front part of our jacket. I've already measured my embroidery area on the front of my jacket, so I know I want my design to be about four inches wide. So I will click and drag my mouse over the design and let go. From here, I'm going to the upper right hand corner of my screen and let's find the transform tab. So I'm going to change the width to four inches and hit apply. Now let's zoom in. Since this front chest logo is going to be smaller than my design on the back, I no longer need my steel border around my letters since it will make my design look crowded. So I'm going to go to the sequence tab on the right hand side of our screen and click on the group that contains the outline and hit delete. Now we will shrink this outer ring so it's not so thick. So let's go to our transform tab and shrink our width here. Since this is a smaller embroidery design, my stitches are going to be much denser on my front chest logo design than on the back of my jacket design. If I embroider this as of right now, my yellow outline will be embroidered on top of my blue background which will create too many stitches in a small area, which could lead to spacing issues or loss of registration when I embroider. So I'm going to have to knock out the stitches behind my beige outline. So what I'm going to do is come over to my sequence tab, select my blue background, and then I'm going to hold down my command button and select my beige outline. Then I'm going to right click on my design, go to shaping and select trim. Now as you can see, the shape of my beige outline has been cut out from the rest of my design. Now what I'm going to do is select my blue background, go to the general tab and change my connection from chisel to square. This is going to ensure that I get nice clean edges on my outline during my final embroidery. Now, before we finish up, I'm going to turn off my realistic view so I can see all of my stitches and check for any flaws in my design. But what we want is nice seamless overlap. So I will right click on my blue background, go to utility and select change. That's going to bring up this little menu. And since this is going on a puffer jacket, I will change this from normal to fleece. Since fleece has some natural texture and fluff to it, this will help compensate my design for the puffiness of my jacket. And as you can see, that helped to create a clear overlap between my blue and beige backgrounds. And now our designs are ready to be embroidered. Want to see how this design turns out? Then check back later for part two of our video and watch as we embroider our designs on our jacket. If you just can't wait, here's a quick sneak peek to feed your curiosity. If you're looking for more inspiration for your next project or want to get some more advice on embroidery, then be sure to check us out on Facebook and join our Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery Group. If you haven't done so already, follow us on Instagram and TikTok for informative and entertaining content. Also, be sure to let us know in the comments if there are any other topics that you'd like to see in a future episode of Embroidery Hub. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.